Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are starting the third juz. But before we start, I would like to share the answer you have given me from yesterday's question. It was from Surah Baqarah Ayah 155. So the question was, in what ways does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us? The answer includes four points you can see in front of you on screen right now. Point number one is fear or danger. Point number two, starvation or hunger. Point number three is loss of life and wealth. And last fourth point is low income or loss of income. Throughout our entire life, Allah tests us by all of these or by at least one of them. Let it be fear, low income or by death of a close one. No one is spared from these tests. Even today, we all are facing a pandemic. From last two, three years, making us question so many things we once held dear to ourselves. But in the last lecture, we also learned that no matter the problem that we are faced with, we need to remember to take help from Salah and Sabar. Wasta'inu bis sabri was salah. Connection with Allah and faith on his might. Now in the start of third para, we have the order to spend our wealth in the best way before the day comes when we face our death and have no time to spend our savings in the way of Allah. So before that time arrives, the time which is promised but is unknown to any of us, we should make it a habit to give in the way of Allah. Then we have the greatest ayah of all, the ayah at which if a person has a firm belief on, has a potential to change his life forever in a good way. That ayah is Ayat al-Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyul qayyum. Which tells us about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tells us about the power he holds. Further, we are preached by the acknowledgement that if we hold on to the rope of Allah, we don't need the support of anyone else. A human mind makes up this need to depend on others in order to survive. But in reality, they are all temporary. In reality, we only need the support of our God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after this, we have the story of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and Namrud. Story of a person who seeks peace at heart. Then we have the attention turning towards spending throughout this entire para. We have numerous discussions and orders for spending as money for instance is the biggest cause of attraction a human holds in this world. Money is what a human holds dear to him and finds it hard to spend it on others. This is why to break this thirst for money, Allah have made this norm to give money as kafara when someone breaks his fast and other orders like this. Further, Allah also says that whoever will spend in my way, I will elevate his status to heights unknown to man. Even we ourselves must have experienced that if we give our wealth in his way, it is multiplied 10 times by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, we should seek for people who doesn't ask for help by themselves, the white collared people, they are around us. It's our duty to seek them and help them in a way that no one else gets to know. As at the end of the day, it's our niyat that will make us special in Allah's eye, inshallah ta'ala. Then in the start of second raba, Allah strictly forbids us to take sooth. Sooth means interest and told us that whoever will practice sood is announcing war with him, war with Allah and his Prophet ﷺ. Then we have the guideline for people who take loan from others. They should write the details down at the time of exchange in front of witnesses to eradicate any mishaps later. Further, we have the great Ghazwai Badr telling us that no matter the numbers, 
If Allah wills, He can grant a handful of people victory even if they are facing an enemy much larger in number. After this, we have the revelation about the attractions of this world that makes us gravitate towards them. These attractions are different for all of us in our different age groups. For some, it must be gadgets, clothes, house, car, gold. These are all the attractions one must stay alert to not get swayed by them too much. In the end of second roba, we have the signs of a God-conscious human. That is, his fear of Allah, his patience for him, his obedience for him. His actions represents everything his heart holds. Then coming towards the third roba, Allah tells us a few fundamental points if we want to stay on the right path. First, Allah warns us by reminding us that if we got astray from the path set by Him, we will face some serious consequences. As it may seem in the beginning that people who enjoy life are not having a hard time, while in reality if we look closely, we will witness their problems, their punishments, their anxiety, their tensions soon enough. Then we are informed that no matter the little deed we do, either good or bad, Allah will make us see that at the end. If we invest money, if we teach something to someone, or we introduce a new trend, Allah never forgets. He will make us see that in the Akhirah and let us face its consequence accordingly. Afterwards, we have the undeniable ownership and the divine power of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Then Allah gives us a shortcut in order to succeed. He says, if we wish to prosper, we should just follow the lifestyle of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we need the love of the Almighty, we just need to follow his favorite human, our Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ Following Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the key to get Allah's love. And after that, we discuss the purity of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. Her brought up and how Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was born. The whole story is narrated in the end of third roba. Then coming towards the fourth roba, Ahle Kitab are mentioned again after para 1 and they are asked the same question that why don't you accept this prophet as your last prophet? Even when your holy book has a revelation of the last prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Further, Muslims are warned not to trust them as they will never be of any use to them and they are their enemy forever. And in the last, Allah simply states that people who purposely choose not to believe the teachings and are habitual of repeating them are not always blessed with Allah's guidance. This is for every one of us. Even today, when you are listening to my audio, it is happening because Allah chose you to do so. Even after this, you choose to ignore and go round about your day neglecting, it will be of your own harm. As Allah doesn't tolerate the disesteem of His book and words. So if today we are blessed to pick up the Quran and offer Salah, we shouldn't take it for granted at all, as not everybody is blessed this way. Alhamdulillah, we are few of those lucky people who are with Allah's will to stand in front of Him and read and understand His commands. As we have learned before that Allah puts a stamp on people's heart who purposely remain ignorant towards His words. Alhamdulillah that we are of very few blessed Muslims. Thanking Allah subhanahu ta'ala, we are ending our juz here. Now come to the question. The question for today is, which points should we keep in mind before spending in Allah's way? I will be waiting for your answers, so keep sending them. We have two duas in this para which we should learn and make part of our daily life. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'd ith hadaytana wahab lana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al-wahhab. In this dua, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Please cause not our hearts to stray after your guidance. And this is very, very important dua. And the second dua is, Rabbana 
انا امنا فغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اي ہوپ یو ول لرن بوت دواز ٹمورو وی ول اسٹارٹ جوز نمبر فور ٹل دین السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ